My name is Antonio from the Trail Locker team. Here reporting from the, you can say, Trail Locker headquarters, wearing Trail Locker merch and speaking to the one and only Coach T. He has he has a name, it's a good name, but I'm not going to say anything uh, because Coach is, I think, the best, best version of him, the best uh, nickname we can uh, use. So I'm going to just say coach, coach, coach. He's he's actually a high school football coach, but he's also coaching us here in his third session. So, yeah. Coach, how are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing, man? I'm okay. A little bit of a headache, but we'll see with, with the new uh, news on the economic calendar if that's going to get better. We should have a good day of trading today. It's going to be a good day. Good day. Hope everybody has a good trading day and trading week. Last time you were in the auditorium, we spoke about your your journey, your trading journey, and I was just wondering. We we had multiple chats in between. Also, maybe you can share with the rest of the audience. Did do you remember when was the first kind of, or maybe even recent, a little bit more recent learnings that you had that you you know you realized something, and how do you, how did you apply them to your trading strategy? Believe it or not, I had a problem of over trading. And so um, tweaking my strategy to where I'm trying to look for one or two trades has definitely allowed me to to not over trade. Um, the max I will take now in a day is three. If I lose all three, I lose all three. Oh, well, um, but I won't go over three. And I try to stick to that to that golden rule of, of three trades, uh, three trades a day. Now, if I hit my daily goal and my first trade, I'm done for the day. I won't trade no more. I don't care how many setups arise or present themselves. I won't trade, but that's just me. Like I said, that's just me. But yeah, for me, it was definitely the over trading as of recently. Trying just trying to catch every swing in the market, trying to catch every single point that Nas or Thirty moved, and that's just not realistic. You got to have a life outside the charts. So um, for me, the biggest thing was definitely just over trading and trying to figure out when when was the best time to trade for me. And so I set up a a time frame. I don't trade. I trade from it was seven. 12 30 so 7 central time so 8 o'clock eastern time to 1 30 eastern time but i kind of condensed that even smaller and it's now market open so 9 30 est to around 1 ish 30 est so kind of condensed it a little bit a couple hours but i noticed that in those in those hours that if i look for one to two setups i'm probably going to get what i want so how did you come up with the number of three? I just felt like any time I would take more than three trades at that point, I was chasing price around. Um, I realized that any any time after three trades, if I lost three trades and I was still trading that day at that point, I was just chasing. I was just chasing price. I was clicking buy, click and sell, clicking buy, click and sell and just trying to make money back. And I mean, you can't trade like that. That's not that's not a smart way to trade, guys. Don't do it. So um, so for me, that's just my magic number three, okay. uh, because I noticed that when I take a maximum of three trades i normally don't dig into my profits too much even if i were to lose two out of those three trades a lot of times i was still in the day in profit so i noticed that when i start to take more than three trades that's when i'm starting to basically wash away my profits okay. you don't ever want to wash away your profits you want to secure your profits so what's the point of trading if you're just gonna give it back okay thank you thank you that's that's a good insight if anybody else has any magic numbers like coach here write them in the comments I'm curious to see what what others are saying. In the meantime, uh, the market is open, coach, and I don't, I don't want to hold you anymore. So feel free to share the screen and show the guys what you have prepared for today. He says, do you use those, do those trades have a risk manage, a risk percentage per day? Uh, my account is small. So yes, the risk realistically is about 15 to 30%. But a lot of times I won't even let it get that high. If I feel like I lost the trade, then I'm just going to pull out the trade. I won't even... I won't even, I don't even think twice about letting it ride out. I like to cut my losses. So, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 20, 15 to 20 points max is where you would see me basically cut my losses. So let's go ahead and share the screen. Ah, go back up. I missed it. No, go back, go back, go back for me, please. All right. I clicked on trade logger again. Sorry, y'all. All right, boom. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So I, what is this? What is going on with my iPad? Sorry. Is that price? No, that's not price. There we go. There we go. That looked better right there. All right. So for me, I already got my zones marked up from uh, yesterday's highs and lows. So blue lines are daily. Green lines are hourly. Orange lines are five minutes. The different thickness just applies to the different strength of the support and resistance for me. I may have missed my entry, but I like shorts at this level right here. So me personally, I'm going to go in for short. Um, if you see, I got a pending setup in that 18K. 
just in case she decides to go up there and touch that again. But I've been looking for shorts all day. I missed my 18K short because I was in the car driving. We don't trade while driving. So me personally, like I said, I already got my zones marked up. And so now at this point, I'm just waiting. Um, I think I missed my entry at the very beginning of this candle or the close of this candle. The previous one, I missed my entry. That's what I wanted. But now it's coming back into my zone. So me personally, I'm up the lot side to 0.02. I am personally going in for, oh, I missed it. Like I tell y'all, I don't enter in the middle of candles. I wait. So if I don't, if I miss my entry, I miss my entry. I don't, I don't play around and jump into trades, trying to get rid of my FOMO. So me personally, I'm looking for something and she's gone. I missed it. Um, but I was looking for something somewhere along those lines. And I want to, I want to see her go down to the uh, yesterday's lows. And that would be my trade right there. So if you did catch that trade, if you did catch that buy at 75, you already 15 points in profit. And if you call my 18K sale earlier, -wee, you 50 points in profit, almost 40 points in profit. So yeah, really all I do is mark up my zones and I sit and wait. So let's see if we can maybe catch a, a trade, guys. Look at that. Already, boom. Oh, she leaving me, y'all. She don't like me today. She leaving me. She, look at that. Woo-wee. Wowzer. It's all right. It's all right. So we missed the entry, but it's okay. Let's just see how it plays out. Let's just see how it plays out. Because a lot of times you may get the, the, the first initial impulsive move and she'll make her way back up and she'll like the retest. So maybe I'll get a retest. Maybe she'll, she'll be nice to me today and give me a retest of, of the area that I want to sell off of. But I may have missed it. I think she's gone. Let me see if there's any questions. Why are you, what are you trading? My phone screen is small. I'm trading now is 100. Um, oh, my she's. Why is it that every time I get on here, I call out a trade and it takes off? Anybody notice that? It's not a coincidence now. I'm just saying. It's not a coincidence. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying. Last week, boom, 75 point long. Right at the start of the session, right now, we had about 40 points short right at the start of the session. Come on, man. Mark up your support and resistance and wait. All you got to do is wait. Uh, maybe you should start a session a little bit later next time or earlier. <laughs> Let me get in the trade first and then and then we join. But I hope, I hope, I'm, I'm hoping that it, somebody caught this trade. If I can make somebody money this morning, I'll be happy. I usually focus on finding my setups, finds a day or none. That's a lot of setups. How many setups do you have? But it also depends on what you're trading, though. It also depends on what you're trading. How many setups do you usually have per day? Me? I normally only get one to two. One to two solid quality setups a day. But that's because I'm only trading one instrument, though. I'm not trading four, five, six different instruments. The pip collector. Bro, your name is wild. You collected. Bro, what is a pip? No, I'm playing. She might come back to being balanced, but I mean, she's taking off right now, bro. She already about 20 points away from my TP, from where I got my TP set. So... <laughs> About tw yeah, about twenty points already. So I think she's gonna hit TP. That would have been a, that would have been the fastest trade of my life. The fastest trade of my life. A ten minute trade. It must be connected somehow to the to the news. Look at this. I don't know if there's any news actually going on right now. Shark traders send. I know there was news. There was news at seven thirty this morning my time. There's news coming out in eighteen oh uh, eight oh five. No. Yeah. No. I don't think that was made by the news. I don't think so. This this is uh, strictly unusual if it's if it's not impacted by some news. That's wild. No, normally, yeah. You see, the pip collector is. I didn't see no news. I don't, I didn't see no news. But y'all could be right. I'm I'm cool with being wrong. The trade was right, so hey, I don't really care about the news if the trade was right. Do you normally trade news? No, I normally trade around news. I trade around red folders and news like that. I don't. I typically do not trade them. red folders at least. Orange folders and green folders, I don't really care about. But yeah, when it comes to as far as red folders, no, I won't trade them. And I don't care if it's a man. That hour candle is ridiculous. We don't see. We don't see it. Share it. Oh, sorry. I'm. I'm. I, I. I thought I was on my computer. Sorry. Got to get used to being on my. Look at that hour candle. That's ridiculous. But if it fails to make a lower low, we could see a push back up. What are you predicting? I mean, realistically, I'd be one and done right now. <laughs> I wouldn't be predicting nothing else for the rest of the day. But it just depends on how she reacts when this hourly candle closes and how far down she decides to close. If we start to get a hard wick in the next 10 to 15 minutes on this hourly candle, I can see a, poss a possible bounce back up off of the 925 area, possibly this way, boom, back up that way, probably to nine, back back to 975 or maybe a little higher to nine, 980s, 990 area. And then I want to see her fall back on her face. But that's just what I want to see. Will she do it? I don't know. But that's, that's what I want to see. And right now we're already starting to get that rejection on the hour. I want to see her close in this zone right here. So for me, to have a bearish bias for the next, let's say, couple hours or whatever, I would like to see her close 
in this little zone right here on the hour. That would give me confirmation to start looking for longs up to the 975 area or 990-ish area, and then I reject off of there. But that that's that's what is what I would be looking for. But like I said, it just depends on how this hourly candle closes. So if she closes below 925, I'd probably look for a retest of yesterday's lows before anything else happens. I probably won't have a bias until I see how she reacts off of yesterday's lows. But that's just kind of how I trade. I just kind of sit back and react. I kind of have a plan and it's kind of, if she does this, I'll do this. And if she does that, I'll do this. And that's just kind of how I trade, sit back and watch. 17.6, let me see, we on the hour. There's 17.6 right there, let's see. I can see that, I can see 17.6. Let me look at the daily. Yeah, I can see 17.6, I like that area. That's a good area to target for shorts, 100%, 110%, that's a good area to short. But like I said, I'm waiting for this hour to close. I wanna see some sort of a pullback before I get in on my short. And boom, look at the hour. Already back into the zone that I wanted to go back into, but we still got 12 minutes. So we're just gonna wait and see. So I, I do have a feeling that if it closed somewhere in the zone that it's in right now, it's gonna pump back up, give us a little retest of some areas, and then she's gonna tank. But if she doesn't close in this area, I think we see some sort of price action around daily lows from yesterday. And I just don't have a read on what she's going to do down there. It just depends. Whatever she wants to do, I'm going to read and react off of it and be ready to make some money. So that's what I'm looking for today on Nas. Man, that was what? She dropped down to 905. Man, that's what? 10, 15 points away from TP in 10 minutes. That's crazy. That was a crazy drop. Let me see if there's any more questions. Any more questions? What's up, Dom? My dog. All right, Pip Collector, chill, bro. I never said you was wrong. We're just talking. You got it. I agree with you. I told you I agree with you. I see your drop. Your drop valid. Yeah. Fed bar speech just open. Mark open. Okay. This is mainly it. We can we can close it off. I think that you shared some good insights for today. And I'm sorry you keep missing your entry when you join. When you join. Oh man, you good. Listen, if I can make somebody, I'm not tripping. I'm gonna get mines. I'm gonna get mines. Hey, Pip, bro. What? Can you change your name, Pip Collector? I need you to change your name, Brody. Can you do that for me? Can you do that for me, please? Oh, he typing. Hold on. We got to see his response. I need to see if he can change his name for your boy. Because we don't collect pips, bro. I just want to comment on the when I asked the audience how many magic, which magic number they have for the maximum trades. A lot of them, most of them said I one. That. Most of them said I've seen that. One. A lot of people say one. That's cool. Hey, that's fine. Because a lot of good times you'll lose a trade and instantly get into revenge mode. So, I mean, you know, if you can lose that one trade and be distant enough to be done, cool. If you can take more than one, cool. But that that one and done, that that is the perfect trading scenario for any trader in the world. You can be one and done every day. That is the perfect scenario. Preacher, do you ever use trailing stops? I don't even use stop losses no more. But yes, yes, in a sense, yes. If price reverses and it hits a certain price number that I don't like, I'll pull out the trade and I'll basically use that as my trailing stop. And I just kind of manage my trades as they go. Of course, of course. Oh, you a Forex trader. That's why you catching pips. Monica, you got a friend. All right. Well, if there's no more questions for me, is there anything else you want to talk about, Antonio? No, that's mainly it. Uh, not every session needs to be an hour long. So it's great to seeing you again. No. With you, and I hope that people gain some valuable insights. See you probably also next week. But until then, we have tomorrow... Devin, we have our trader on Thursday, we have Alex on Friday, so yeah, try to jump into the comments and people still leaving some great comments, some great discussion, but that's it for the stage. Good luck today. Alrighty. Good luck. Good luck. Right, you guys, y'all go make some money. Good luck, everybody.